Let's take a look at a real graphics intensive application, and that would be Adobe Photoshop. How you doing, John? It's fine. All right, the newest version of Photoshop is 3.0. You've got a na native version for the Power Mac, and mm -hmm. I want to go through some of the things in the new version of Photoshop that really take the juice out of that Power Mac CPU. Sure. All right, let's talk about some of the simple things in Photoshop. You have an image, and you want to do some, some manipulation, some adjustments. Give me a few examples. Okay, we've got an image here, in fact. We scanned it in. I could use command keys, or a first-time user could just go in and maybe punch up the brightness and contrast, try to breathe more life into the image. A professional might use full advantage of the Power Mac by using something like our levels control to really spice it up or, or bring back all the rich detail that was there. All right, one of the things that are, that's neat about Photoshop is you can create photos that didn't really exist in the first place, take yeah. a piece from one picture, combine it with a piece in another picture. There's no fish in this particular shot. I think it'd be look a little more interesting if I had a fish underwater there. Uh, show me how I would combine those elements. Let's do just that. I can open up other files, maybe a photograph of some fish or a little piece of one, and then just bring them into the background. I'll use a new feature in the program, something that we're able to show you quickly here. Command keys give me my favorite palettes. And if I use something like our paths menu, I can quickly select that fish. And then just by dragging him over, put him into the background here very quickly and easily and be able to pick it up move it around. I can even resize it with an effect like scaling and make sure it's the way I imagined it to be, as you see here. All right, we've combined the two elements now, but suppose I want to do a little work just on the fish, just in the background. One of the beauties of the program and, and the PowerPC environment is I can actually pull them back and, and just work on them separately, right? That's right. Layers, it's a big new feature. Basically, you go into a palette called Layers, and you have the ability to see the fish independently from the background. If I want to give it its own unique name, I can type in whatever I want. I'll just call it the fish. And here, what you're seeing in these small thumbnail views is a way of distinguishing the fish and being able to drag it around or maybe change its opacity at some time, lighten it up, make it a little bit translucent, play with it completely in an independent way of the background. Can I do the same thing with text if I were doing commercial stuff or a magazine cover or something like that? Very much so. In fact, that's going to be a big win. A lot of people, and that freedom to add more layers, opens great doors because they could use our text tools, and as you'll see me do here, just click once on the image, take advantage of all the fonts that are loaded into my Macintosh. Here we're speaking to all the PostScript Type 1, even the True Type fonts, and be able to type something in or drag it in from the clipboard and see the characters at full size. If I type the word Adobe, for example, maybe I'll beef up the point size mm -hmm. to 143 points and then click OK. I'll see as white lettering or whatever color I've picked up, that appear independently on the screen. And again, with this layers idea, I can call it my own unique layer, text here, and be able to freely mix and match that, move it around today, tomorrow, whatever, or even rearrange the order of those layers as you see me working here. Let's talk about one of the neatest things in Photoshop and Photoshop and one of the most computation intensive things, and that's the filters you use in which you can really adjust lighting and, and, and things like that. Show me how you do it. Sure. I'll put this guy away, maybe drop everything out, and then show you how maybe if I take a scene uh, someplace far away like Athens, Greece, there's a marvelous new filter that lets me add a whole new dimension to it. If you've got a fixed lighting condition like we have here, Maybe I'll go in and not just soften it up or add noise or distort it somehow. I'll actually change the feel of lighting by our lighting effects mm -hmm. filter. And in this case, the program will take and build a small proxy, a little window that you see here. I can move a lighting source a bit like you've got. I can add other colored lights into the background and dramatically change this in some very creative ways. And I'll take full advantage of the Power Mac because these are very computationally intensive sure. operations. When I like the creative effect I've got, I say OK, and then watch it work and do its glory on the full image. And these could be giant files, and boom, done just like that. That's right. Real quick, uh, rough delta on performance Power Mac uh, running Photoshop 3 versus a Quadra, say? Sure, easily two to four times. Depending on the function, yeah. some of these functions might be as many as eight to ten times wow. the speed. OK, thanks. If anybody should know about Macintosh computers, it should be the folks at the University of Texas in Austin. They own about 5,000 Macs, and they just bought 750 Power Macs. So we thought we'd visit them to find out what benefit they're deriving from using the PowerPC chip. Large institutions are seldom first to make the leap to new technology. But the University of Texas jumped at the new Power Macintoshes. You can find the PowerPC-based Macs in student computer labs, classrooms, on professors' desks, and in administrators' offices.